With a record 20 English League titles, including a record 13 Premier League titles, in addition to 12 FA Cups, two European Cups and a host of League titles, uh, League Cup titles and Charity Shield titles, Manchester United are by far the most successful football team in the history of the English game. And in addition to that, they are one of the most successful football teams in the history of European and world football. Yet since the departure of legendary manager Sir Alex Ferguson in the summer of 2013, after clinching his 13th Premier League title, they have yet to win uh, an additional league title. Their only success has come in the league with one League Cup, one, uh, one FA Cup and one Community Shield trophy. And they have flattered to deceive over the past uh, seven years with accusations of a dour brand of football under the likes of Louis van Gaal and uh, David Moyes and Jose Mourinho and a preference for commercial success from the owners and the chief executive. And today we are looking at those owners, the Glazer family, and how they have impacted Manchester United, how they took over the club in the early to, to mid 2000s, and just exactly what they want with Manchester United, what their aims are and what their priorities are. Before we do that, it's important to look at the Glazers' first um, venture uh, into sports, and that was in their home country of the United States with the NFL team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 1995. They took over the Bucks, as they're called. One of the first things they did was that they sought to, um, to build um, a new stadium in order to maximize profits to increase the capacity of the crowd and to in increase the, the brand of the, uh, of the Buccaneers, to, to build their brand up. And in order to do this, they uh, approached uh, the, the city of Tampa Bay and they said, we're willing to pay for half of the stadium and you can pay for the other half or else we will move the club to another city. Um, I believe they had, they had mentioned uh, Long Island as a potential destination. And in order to avoid losing a, a highly influential NFL team, the city came to an agreement with local residents that there would be they would cough up for the additional half of the stadium and uh, that vote uh, passed by 53% to 47% and it sparked outrage among trade unions, uh, workers' rights organisations that the poorest members of the community in Tampa Bay were forced to pay for uh, the uh, Buccaneers' new stadium. Following this move, uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' value rose from, I believe, around $200 million to almost a billion dollars over the next 10 years. And this certainly vindicated the Glazers' um, position uh, to build this new stadium. Uh, I believe that this is a, a clear indication of the type of owners that they are. They have very little regard for the, um, uh, for the club and the, the community that they are investing in, and they're they're, they're, they're caring just about their own profits and their own brand and how they can, they can build those up. The head of the Glazer family was Malcolm Glazer, who um, was a, de a descendant of a poor Jewish Lithuanian family and built his fortune first through watch companies. He started selling watches door to door and founded his own watch company and then invested in a number of different uh, business areas, namely real estate, and he, he, he made his fortune owning shopping malls. His, his sons, uh, Joel and Avram, were very, very interested in football, and they believed that Manchester United ha was the club in the world with the most global appeal. In addition to this, they believed that Manchester United could be acquired relatively cheaply, and in fact, this is something that the media mogul Rupert Murdoch had also thought and he had sought to pursue a deal for Manchester United in the mid-1990s himself only for the Labour uh, government to believe that there was a serious conflict of interest and to deny him uh, the right to partake in further talks to buy the club. And in the early 2000s, in 2003, the Glazer family began buying small shares in Manchester United at the start at just 3%, but by 2004, that had um, more than quadrupled to almost 15% of the club. Now, at this time, Manchester United were, of course, under the management of Sir Alex Ferguson. And one of Sir Alex Ferguson's mm -hmm. Uh, great loves in life, if you will, as well as football, was horse racing. And he owned many, many different horses, one of which he co-owned with Manchester United shareholders J.P. Morgan and John McManus. 
and this horse was called the Rock of Gibraltar. Now, around the time that the Glazers were starting to buy shares in Manchester United, Ferguson fell out with both Morgan and McManus, and in order to remove a conflict of interests on the board of directors at the club, they sought to sell their shares. And who jumped at the opportunity to come in and increase their stock? It was, of course, the Glazers, and they they took on uh, Morgan and McManus's shares in Manchester United, which were just under 29%, and that brought their own shares up to 57% which meant that they were obliged to launch a formal takeover bid, which they did. And in May 2005, they became full owners of Manchester United in a highly controversial deal. Rather than investing their own money in the club, the Glazers used a leverage buyout to buy Manchester United. This is taking loans secured against the assets already in place at Manchester United, meaning that they didn't actually have to put in any of their own money. Manchester United was so valuable at the time, and indeed of course still is, but it was so valuable in the mid-2000s that the Glazers could point to all of the assets already in place and all of the money already in place in Manchester United and tell the banks lending them money that they were going to be in charge of all of this so they could repay the loans. and. They um, they were able to get the deal through, and one of the key players in this um, in this deal uh, was a young man at the time, a chartered accountant called Ed Woodward, who the Glazers had become acquainted with through their relationship with um, J.P. Morgan and John McManus, and who would of course become a key player in Manchester United over the next 15 years. Once the deal was complete, Manchester United were immediately 540 million pounds in debt. The first time they were in debt since the 1930s when they almost went bankrupt. And there were interest payments immediately put on the club of 60 million pounds per annum. Now, the club were able to ride this out due to the um, commercial assets that they had in place, the, the deals with, with sponsors, and of course the success that Sir Alex Ferguson was bringing to the club. And in the, his final eight years at Manchester United, he won an additional five league titles under the Glazers' ownership, three league cups, and another Champions League. The reaction to the takeover by the Glazers from United fans was angry to say the least. And on their first official visit as full owners, in 2005, they were met with a protest of 300 angry fans um, uh, who were policed by 100 police from the Greater Manchester Police Department. And there were chants of die, Glazer, die being sang by these, these angry protesters. Immediately, uh, a football club called FC United of Manchester was set up by a group of disgruntled Manchester United fans. And fans met with a group of wealthy Manchester United fans known as the Red Knights to try and persuade them to buy out the Glazers. However, their billion pound offer was um, was immediately rejected by the Glazers who, who value and continue to value Manchester United at a far greater price than that. As mentioned previously, a key player in the deal to, to for the Glazers to take over Manchester United was Ed Woodward, a chartered accountant and former banker. And he was immediately given increasing responsibility during Sir Alex Ferguson's um, final years as Manchester United manager, um, becoming executive vice chairman in 2013, which is effectively chief executive officer. And since then, he's been met with heavy criticism for his handling of the transfer in the transfer market. His first transfer window was when David Moyes had just been appointed and the only deal that he managed to complete was Marin Fellaini. Fellaini had been available for, uh, he had a release clause in his contract for about 23 million pounds. However, United didn't act until the last week of the, of the transfer window and they had to pay 28 million pounds uh, to get him from Everton. And since then, there have been times when United have backed the managers. Van Gaal was given a lot of money, uh, Mourinho was given a lot of money, and Solskjaer has been given some money. But at the same time, there's a strong argument to make that Woodward's deals have been glamour signings. You can think of the likes of Angel Di Maria, Falcao, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, although Ibrahimovic did, did do reasonably well in his, his only full season for the, for the club, and the likes of, of Romelu Lukaku. Um, and Paul Pogba, although Pogba seems to be to be doing well now. 
And the fact that they have a chartered accountant running the club, as opposed to someone with experience in football, uh, says a lot about the, the, the type of club that, that the Glazers want Manchester United to be. It's not one that is focused, as Sir Alex Ferguson was, on winning every title that he possibly could. It's one that's focused very much on maximizing the brand of Manchester United, which is huge, and of getting commercial deals for any any type. Obviously they have their it's Chevrolet they're sponsored by, I believe at the moment, uh, on, the, on the shirt, but uh, Manchester United have official wine partners, official paint partners, uh, any commercial item that you can possibly think of, you can bet that Ed Woodward has gone and secured a deal with a major brand for that. They were paid 10 million pounds just to put DHL on, the, on their training tops, I think it was. It, it was a 10 million pound deal just to be photographed with DHL on them. So the, 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 the commercial side of the business is very much what Woodward has focused on. And from 2005, to 2016, the, the, the value of the club in terms of commercial revenue has increased through the roof. It was about 45 million pounds a year in 2005 when Woodward first came on board and it's, it's well over 200 million pounds now. I know that in 2016 it was just under 200 million pounds but it would be well over that now. Under Woodward, United relocated their official company registration from Matt Busby Way in uh, Old Trafford to the tax haven that is the Cayman Islands and because of this they don't have to follow the standard corporate governance rules of the New York Stock Exchange. While it's quite common for owners of football clubs not to put any of their own money in, a another example of a big English football club who whose owners don't do that is, is Arsenal, what's not uh, common is for owners to take money out of the club themselves and that's something that the Glazers do. There are six children of uh, Malcolm Glazer who are all involved with, with Manchester United, they all sit on the board of directors and they're all paid a yearly salary of 2.5 million pounds. In addition to that there have been occasions over the, the years where the Glazer children have been given loans from the club or have been paid fees of up to 10 million pounds for management and administration costs. So you have owners that are not putting any money in, they're maximizing the profits of, of the club for themselves, they're withdrawing a salary, the, the likes of um, FSG um, at Liverpool certainly don't don't pay themselves salaries, um, Cronky Sports Entertainment don't pay themselves salaries at, at, at Arsenal. It's quite unheard of for owners to pay themselves uh, salaries and to pay the board of directors, certainly family members on the board of directors, salaries at football clubs. Um, and Manchester United is basically being used as a cash cow for the Glazer brand, for the Glazer family. They've Remember, they didn't put any money in at, at the start when they took over the club. Um, they've incurred debt of £540 million pounds upon originally buying the club. There have been major penalty fees that uh, Manchester United have had to pay for restructuring debt, for refinancing, so that they can manage the debt. And over the course of the last 15 years, these fees have risen to amounts of one billion pounds. So Manchester United have had to pay 1.5 billion pounds. Um, Granted, some of it is, is, a lot of it is still it owed to banks and to, 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 to third parties, so they haven't paid them. But that, that's the level of debt that have been afflicted inflicted on Manchester United just for the privilege of being owned by the Glazer family. Without a doubt this has been a great deal for the Glazer family and this has been terrible for Manchester United. The, the Glazers are not after on-field success, mm. they're only after trying to maximise their profits. Now we come to an important point, obviously they have to be putting in some money for the, the club to work, for, for the club to be now, of course, Manchester United are known for being big spenders and for paying high wages. However, this wasn't always the case. And in the initial years after Sir Alex Ferguson, after the, the Glazers had taken over the, the club, before Sir Alex Ferguson retired, they weren't spending tons of money. They uh, sold Cristiano Ronaldo to Real Madrid in 2009 for a world record fee at the time of 80 million pounds. And if you remember in the following December, Wayne Rooney handed in a transfer request after meeting with then Chief Executive David Gill to uh, discuss his displeasure at the amount of money that had been put into the club in terms of transfers and how he perceived them to be weaker than their rivals, namely Chelsea. 
um, at the time. However, since then, the Woodward effect in terms of the commercial deals that the club have managed to put in place has really, really, really come into effect. And Manchester United's total revenue for last year, I believe, was something in the region of £650 million. So although they're still having to pay this, this debt of I believe it's only about 20 million 30 million pounds per per year now as opposed to the 60 it was in the in the years following the the glazers first takeover um they, they've got to a stage where the debt's not really a problem and that they are uh they are able to pay for, for for huge transfers and huge wages however what the glazers are not willing to do is to get the right structure in place behind the manager um, to and also to support Woodward. They don't have a director of football. They don't have a head of recruitment. They rely solely on the judgment of Ed Woodward and Joel Glazer, who is effectively the don of the Glazer family following Malcolm's passing a few years ago. There's a big difference between aiming for Champions League football year upon year, which is what the Glazer family are trying to do, and uh, trying to, to win the league, which is what the likes of Manchester City are trying to do. And Manchester City will fully back the manager every single year, whereas Manchester United don't. Obviously, I've mentioned before, David Moyes wasn't backed in his, in his only season in charge. Um, Jose Mourinho in his last season definitely wasn't backed that Manchester United had just finished second the year before albeit 19 points behind champions Manchester City and there must have been a, a line of thinking uh, among uh, the Glazer family and Ed Woodward that they were in a good place they didn't need to invest to uh, com compete they were happy with second place uh, even if they only invested in Fred Diogo Dalot and Lee Grant um, for sure they would continue to get Champions League football because they got it the year before and indeed the year before that when they won the Europa League however this obviously wasn't the case it really irritated Mourinho he was so unhappy in that pre-season tour um, of the United States and it obviously culminated with his sacking in late 2018 It'll be interesting to see how they back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now. They're still to make a signing in the 2020 uh, summer transfer window, although we're now in September. And of course, they're linked with the likes of, of Jadon Sancho for a £100 million move. We'll see if they can pursue that deal. Um, I think it's safe to say that the Glazers have, are sucking the, the life out of Manchester United. They're only in it for themselves. And um, it's sad to see a, a great traditional English club being treated like this. Guys, thanks very much for watching the video today. Don't forget to smash a like, share the content around, subscribe to the channel, and subscribe to our socials. We're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Thanks very much for watching, and see you next time.